Welcome to Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking brings you the Gulf Coast's finest chefs cooking their delicious recipes with all natural gas. This show is brought to you by Pensacola Energy, clean, efficient, natural gas. And now, Coastal Cooking. It is my pleasure to introduce Executive Chef Chris Voorhees with the Pensacola Blue Wahoos. Hi, Carmela. Thanks for having me. We are thrilled to have you. And Chris, a lot of our viewers may think that, you know, you all have the typical baseball fare. You know, Which we hot do. dogs, hamburgers, peanuts, popcorn, but that's not all. No, not by any stretch of the imagination. We, uh, we pride ourselves on having a very diverse menu down at the ballpark. So. And some very gourmet items, too, I might add. Absolutely. So we're going to show everyone or just give them a sample of what's available at the Blue Wahoo Stadium. Let's do it. First, we're going to start with one of your uh, probably the newest and most popular dish, the Battleship. It's uh, the Battleship. It's our newest creation. It's uh, what most people have likened to a uh, po' boy on steroids. Wow. It's a huge po' boy. Uh, it's got a half dozen uh, fried shrimp, half dozen fried oysters, it's, uh, two soft shell crabs fried, and we top it off with our fried potato salad balls. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a big sandwich. That's steroids, all right. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, how many people can eat this? Uh, I've seen four people. Really? Yeah, or one really, really hungry person. But I, I usually when, uh, when I see people that have purchased it, I you know, kind of see where they're going, and there's usually like at least three or four people sitting <laughs> oh, there. Oh, really? Yeah, it's always nice to share something. Oh yeah, absolutely. Big. Well, tell us, tell us how this all goes together. All right, well, I've got the fried potato salad ball, just the classic southern potato salad with some uh, little mustard and egg. I went ahead and breaded those up beforehand. I'm gonna pop them in the. How did you come up with? This is the first time I've ever seen fried potato salad. You know, my sous chef Travis Wilson actually came up with this, and we were actually offsite at another property for the ACC uh, men's basketball championship. Um, and he just happened to find himself in the kitchen he was working in with an abundance of uh, extra potato salad. And uh, we kind of got to thinking about what we were going to do to use it up. And he said he was going to fry it. And I kind of laughed. Well, I came back, you know, 20, 30 minutes later and he had fried potato salad balls. And all the cooks were trying them. And there and it was. It's a keeper, huh? Yeah. And then actually we got here and we came up with the battleship. And we we're just like something over the top and he's fried potato salad, let's put it on top. And you know, people that's people that's really good. respond to it. And, and most people's reaction is like yours. They're like, what, fried potato salad? Who yeah. does that? And so it's just another way we try to be innovative and just, you know, it's, it's something crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I said, you don't see it a lot. Well, I bet it's delicious. It is definitely delicious. I mean, you get the contrast, the crunch, the mm -hmm. soft potato salad, the creaminess, and you get the, the, the warm, uh, crunch on the outside. We try to make sure it's a little bit cool on the inside. We don't yes. want it to be completely warm. What uh, type of bread, bread crumbs did you use? Uh, that's panko. I just do a little bit okay. of seasoned flour. Uh, you might form it into a nice ball. Most potato salad's pretty tight. Mm -hmm. um, so you just want to form it into a ball. Um, obviously these are pretty uh, decent sized. We call them baseballs. Obviously we're at a baseball stadium. I love that. And uh, yeah, just uh, roll it in some seasoned flour, dip in a little egg mm -hmm. wash, and then pull it out of the egg wash, roll it into some panko. Uh, we usually uh, throw our, ours in the freezer for a little bit to let them firm up before we yep. actually serve them. Yeah. Uh, it helps them to hold together a little bit better. And then while these guys are finishing well, that's up. That's a great accompaniment. It is. I and we've got bit. seafood here. Absolutely. That's one of the things we pride ourselves, I pride myself on having such a diverse selection of food down at the ballpark. I mean, mm -hmm. the ballpark sits right on the, on the, on the uh, bay. So it's just... Uh, you would expect that, or you would hope that there would be some, a decent amount of seafood options. Right, right. And um, we definitely try to. Absolutely. And we definitely like seafood po' boy. We do the shrimp po' boy in addition to this. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me, Carmela. Mm -hmm. I'll start breading some of these shrimp up. Okay. We've got an egg wash and we've got our seasoned flour. Mm-hmm. These things look like they're getting close. So they are beautiful. They don't take long, do they, Chris? Oh, no. You get your oil what, nice and hot. What type of oil? Uh, this right here is just a little uh, canola, canola, canola blend. Okay. That's great. So, um, breading so our shrimp first. Yes, ma'am. So, you take your shrimp, lightly coat in seasoned flour, like I said. Mm hmm. Take about six of those. One extra for the cameraman. I know he's hungry. I think he is. We, he, we always work up an appetite. Oh, yeah. You know, on coastal cooking. Absolutely. I'll take those shrimp, shake off the excess egg wash mm -hmm. off of them, and then back into the flour. So you actually uh, have a contest? 
We do. We have a contest for this. Yes, uh, it's called Can You Sink the Blue Wahoo's Battleship? Uh, <laughs> kind of like the old board game. Um, and we give people the opportunity to, to buy it if you can beat the record time, which right now I believe is uh, around 11 and a half minutes. Uh, then you actually get a t-shirt and you get your picture taken, put up on the board along the concourse. If you can eat it in under nine minutes, you get your picture, you get a t-shirt, and uh, we also pick up the tab. So no one's ever done the nine minutes? No one has done the nine minutes as of yet. Gosh. But uh, I'm sure someone will. There's somebody out there. There are some. We had the guy the other day who came pretty close. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a lot of food, so mm -hmm. one, he hit a wall. And uh, I'm not really, I'm a big guy, but I've never really been like a power eater. I mean, but there are those guys out there that pride themselves on uh, taking down the, those insurmountable food yes, challenges. Yes, they are, and more power to them. Absolutely. That's all I can say. Um, so we've got our shrimp going right here. I'm going to let those fry. That's hard to do. Okay. While those are going, I'm going to go ahead and get... Uh, these soft shell crabs. Oh. These are a little bit smaller. Usually I like to use the colossal size. Mm -hmm. um, but this time of year, there's a little bit of a shortage on these guys. So right now I'm going to go ahead and put three on today just to uh, make sure we got enough size on this po' boy on steroids. Yes. So we just give them a little seasoned flour. Standard breading procedure. Just to make sure you mm -hmm. get in this little coating of flour. It helps all the breading stick. How many hamburgers and hot dogs do you all prepare a night? You know, about hot dogs, we usually sell anywhere between, depending on the day and how many people are in the stadium on our busiest nights, I want to, it's usually in the neighborhood of about uh, 800 to 1,000 hot dogs a night. Seriously? Oh, yeah, a absolutely. Night. Oh, yeah. My goodness gracious. We'll do that at night. And uh, hamburgers, uh, mm -hmm. you know, anywhere between like five and 700, like I said, depending on how many folks are in the ballpark. And you tend to notice in the warmer weather that people tend to slow down and they don't eat as early. So it's mm -hmm. usually later in the evening when the sun goes down and it kind of cools off a little bit. But we sell a decent amount, you know. I mean, I think last year in our little uh, commemorative book we put out, we had a list of stats about, you know, how much food that we had sold on our busiest days. And it's a lot. I mean, we got five or, you know, 5,000 roughly people yeah. down there. Uh, when you got roughly 5,000 people down there, I'd... Uh, it doesn't take long to go through some food. No, I bet. I bet you've got quite an operation back in the kitchen, too. We do. We've got some of the, the best cooks in Pensacola. I mean, we have a, I feel we've got a great team. Um, like I said, we actually have an oyster bar that's at the baseball park. We have you a, do? Yeah, we do. We have a Off the Hook. It's a, a, our bar. It's, got a, it's a craft brew house. That's all craft beers on tap and in bottles. And then uh, next to that, inside the bar, is uh, an oyster bar. We actually employ some of the best shuckers from the area to come there on their days off from other restaurants and uh, shuck for us. You all have thought of everything. You know, and it's uh, that's going really well. We also do beer bowl and shrimp in there. So um, you are, if you're a seafood fan, you will. Uh, you'll well, love it. You'll love it. I mean, mm -hmm. I love. I like hot dogs, and I mean, you got to have one when you come to a baseball game. Mm -hmm. But you know, for me, if I'm coming to a baseball game and they have that many options, that's what I'm going with. Yeah, especially the seafood. My goodness. Absolutely. So, so good here in Pensacola. The shrimp are almost done. Mm -hmm. Give those a few more minutes. Have you been to a game yet? Yes. Yeah? Yes, I have. What was your favorite part of the experience? I, you know, I just love the, the view. Yeah, you I can't mean, beat that. The game's that. great, but the view was great. You can't beat it. Absolutely. And the fireworks, mm -hmm. my, that's every Saturday Every night? Saturday game we do fireworks. Well, yeah. now, actually, we've started doing it on Tuesday games. So now every Tuesday and every Saturday game uh, okay. we do fireworks okay. after the show, after the baseball game. So. It's mm -hmm. good for families. Kids come out, you know, it gives them a good time. And uh, I mean, it's just fun for Pensacola. Yeah. I grew up it here is. in town, so, it, you know, I have the honor of working there. And, but it's, mm -hmm. it's one of those cool things that, you know, I never had here growing up. And now it's yeah. just uh, it's so great to have those mm -hmm. things for families to get out and have a place like that mm -hmm. to go. And the evenings can be so nice here uh, in Pensacola during your season. So, uh, oh, yeah, that breeze place. blowing off the, off the bay. Mm -hmm. All right, these shrimp are done. Look good. Our crab are ready to go in, and we've got oysters. Yes, ma'am. All right. All right. Look at that. And all three of these are going on one battleship, right? Mm-hmm. Normally, like I said, normally it'd be two. Mm -hmm. But because of the size. Yeah, because of the size, okay. I want to make sure that we have the, a decent size on there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do the oysters go in with this? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and throw those in. Okay. Let that oil come back up the temp a little bit. Drop down, we threw those shrimp in. So. All right, perfect. We'll get the oysters going, and then we're going to take a commercial break. All right. Shall we do that? Sounds Let's good. Let's go ahead and start those, though. 
So the oysters oh, would just shrimp. go straight into the flour. They have enough natural juices on them that mm -hmm. there, uh, there's plenty in there to, uh, to coat. We'll get those in there. Kind of move it around a little bit. I love a variety of seafood. I do too. On a sandwich. What, it's so nice. What's your I favorite get, seafood? Well, of course, I love the shrimp. Um, but I love a pool board where I can mix oysters and shrimp, mm -hmm. you know, half and half. Um, you, you get to, you know, experience but two different tastes of seafood, and that's always nice. Oh, yeah. That is going to be great, Chris. All right, so we got the oysters Look in. The soft shell crabs are coming along. Okay. And we're well on our way to finishing the battleship. We are. Let's take a commercial break, and we may uh, start assembling this during the break and Absolutely. come back and have it ready for you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We are ready to build our battleship. Yeah, you ready? Well, I'm ready, and I can't wait to show everybody what you serve it on. A yep. frisbee. Yeah, we serve uh, all the battleships as well as the, all the oysters that we serve and uh -huh. the beer boiled shrimp. We serve them on a souvenir frisbee. I love it. Yeah, you so take it home. Take it home with you. As, uh, and also we serve, like I mentioned, we serve the shrimp and grits. Comes a little souvenir helmet too. Look at this. This is the neatest thing. Little bowl of shrimp and, get, and grits that go in a little baseball can. Mm -hmm. How precious is that? I love it. And you know, we find a few Frisbees laying around the stadium. Either people just don't want them or we usually recycle mm -hmm. them. I'll go wash them and give them to kids as they're leaving sure. the stadium, just a little souvenir. But you never find any of these, so, so they always cute. take those home with them. I love that. You've even got your own newspaper printed that you use as liners for yeah, your sandwiches we, we use those and for fish liners. and chips. Yeah, we fold those up in the cones for the fish and chips, kind of like do a UK style. A little Wahoo Gazette. It's great. And uh, we use one of those actually to plate the battleship. So we can get started doing that. Let's do it, Chris. Right. I can't wait to see this go together. So we got our foot long uh -huh. fresh French bread. Let's see, do you want it on our, oh, our That's tartar, tartar sauce, sauce is under there. Holding it up. There you go. So we take a pretty liberal amount. I mean, with this much fried food, why hold back on the tartar sauce, right? <laughs> That's right. So we take tartar sauce just right over the top and the bottom. I mean, what's the use? Exactly. Don't be shy. No. Obviously, if you don't like tartar sauce, we can withhold mm -hmm. it if you request. This is the time to splurge. Absolutely. So we got okay. that. And now we'll take soft shell crab, or I'm sorry, lettuce. Now we take the shredded lettuce, a nice decent amount of shredded mm -hmm. lettuce over the top. We'll take our sliced tomatoes. Six of those. So you are getting some veggies with all this yes, fried food. Now we go to the soft shell crab. Put the soft shell crab on here. Golden brown. These Take are the perfect size. Fried oysters. Oh, our oysters. And those gulf shrimp fried up. How do you eat this? With both hands. Anyway, you can. <laughs> and the, uh, to top it all off, the fried potato salad balls right on top. The baseballs. Look at this. And these are uh, little cherry tomatoes. If you don't think you've had enough when you get through yeah, all that, you've yeah. got these two cherry tomatoes left. These are mm -hmm. gonna take you over the edge. These are uh, to represent the uh, pegs in the old uh, battleship game. Oh. So you sank the battleship. And how dare you ask what's for dessert, huh? Exactly. <laughs> Look at this. And that's it. This is the Blue Wahoo's battleship. What a dish. Spectacular. Thank you. Spectacular. And our next dish is on your catering menu? Uh, yeah, we do a lot of catering uh, mm -hmm. down at the ballpark uh, up in the Hancock Bank Club, which is used for the season ticket holders during the games. Uh, mm -hmm. On non-game days, we use that from anything from, uh, we've had high school reunions there, um, what, a couple wedding receptions, a I lot of company know. parties. We're actually having a celebrity softball game coming up uh, on Saturday, so we'll have a little VIP reception up there. And uh, I mean, it's it's basically just like going to a hotel or any sort of banquet facility, except you're upstairs, you have an yeah. open view of the bay, and you're looking right out over the water. It's a great venue for so many things. Absolutely. Really unique. It really is. unique. It's a fun place to work, and you, you know, mm -hmm. when you're working and walking around, you're outside, oh, you're right yeah. on the water. It's great. And you're, there's never a dull moment, is there? Oh, no, never. <laughs> That's what makes I it fun. I didn't think so. All right, so our next dish is uh, one of our most popular items on our catering menu. We do a lot of catering at the ballpark mm -hmm. upstairs in the Hancock Bank Club. Um, we even do some down in the batting cage. So if you want to have oh. a party and have a birthday party and come 
hits the balls in the batting cage and uh, we roll out the food and do all that stuff. So nice. one of our most popular items on there is a pecan crusted grouper. Mm -hmm. We start with a uh, fingerling potatoes, a little asparagus and a, an orange molasses reduction. So we'll get that started. I'm actually going to get the uh, the orange reducing down. We got a nice hot pan with this natural gas. Oh yeah, Look throw that, that in there. Let that go. I am so uh, a little impressed bit of molasses with in there. your um, your food selection, Chris. Thank you. And that's going to make a sauce. Mm -hmm. Thick yes, ma'am. That will. Looks good. We'll Looks get, good. Let him go. While we're doing that, go ahead and bread this nice grouper here. So I take a little oh, bit of egg nice. wash over the top just to get a little bit wet. Mm -hmm. Take him, a little seasoning. You always season as you go, folks. Salt and pepper. And take him. We've got this little uh, pecan crust that I made, a little bit of uh, pecans, some panko, a little bit of herbs, salt and pepper, and just a touch of flour. Get him in here, a little oil in this pan. Unique breading for this. And you bread both sides? No, nope, just one. Just one, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you lay it breading side down. Breading side down. I've got that going. And our sauce looks good. Sauce is reducing nicely. Yes, it is. Well, Chris, while this is all cooking, let's talk about what do you do in the off season? In the off season, uh, it's... Uh, I know you're very busy during baseball season, oh yeah. of course. We stay pretty, last year we did 70 baseball games and we also did 70 non-baseball events as we like to call them on those days mm -hmm. off. Um, like I said, anywhere from company parties, some companies will come in and rent out the entire baseball stadium. We'll put inflatables okay. on the field for the kids mm -hmm. and um, you know, if they just have their whole reign of the park, they'll go downstairs and hit in the batting cage like, mm -hmm. I, like I mentioned and they come through concessions. In different areas and we, we stay busy it's also because we we do pull a pretty strenuous 70 game sketch schedule um that you is kind of get a little, little bit of a down a little bit of a breather um mm -hmm. i mean for the most part i mean it's kind of like a a research and development department in the all season we're all just thinking up new ideas for the next season and yeah. trying to see what we can come up with to stay you know creative and to stay fresh mm -hmm. and i think just like in any other restaurant you go to, it's when you start to, when you grow, grow complacent, when you start to, people start to forget about you. Right. So we're always just trying to think of ways to, to stay fresh and modern and just change mm -hmm. up either uh, dishes that we have on the menu or, you know, I, items on the menu that didn't move so well. Mm -hmm. So we find ways to stay busy. And also Ovations, who I work for, um, we're the partner of the Blue Wahoos and all the food and beverage. Oh, our, okay. our motto is everything's fresh. And one of the big things there is um, with the company is Everything's fresh, so when you come to the concession stand, which we have two main concession stands, when you come order a hamburger, it's made right when you order it, or seconds before. We have a lot of people, so we try to, right. to get people in and out as fast as we can. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and turn this group over real and quick. Now, you are responsible for everything oh, with food in the park. Concession yes, ma'am. Yep, concession stands, uh, catering. The catering. We actually, uh, we also feed both teams during the game. So and feed both teams. At the end of the night, that's kind of our last, uh, our last hurrah of the evening every night during the game is we feed the away team and the home team uh, a meal. Mm -hmm. Sometimes too, if there's a, a rain delay and there's a little, or we're doing a double header, we'll feed them a snack in between games and then okay. they, they get a meal and they eat pretty well. I bet they do. I bet they do. You got to feed them well. Yeah, I mean, it ranges from ribeye steaks, baked potatoes, and lasagna night. We do, try to switch it up. Do they up tell for you them. what they want, or do you just come up no, with menus? No, just come up with menus. Okay. Every once in a while, they'll say, hey, you know what? You haven't made us this or that in a while. Can you, yeah. can you put some more? Can we get fajitas? Do they have a favorite? Is there a popular menu items that they I've request never actually all the had time? anything that they wouldn't eat, to be honest with you. Oh, I'm sure. I just didn't know if they really had, you know, favorites. I would think steak would be one of them. They definitely like the steak. <laughs> yeah. They like the steak and they they love fish. Anytime we put fish down there, we have nothing yeah. but, but uh, compliments. And Surf and turf. There surf, you go. There's never anything left. I bet. Look right, how so our beautifully sauce is reduced. this brown. We've got our groupers nice and brown with the pecan coating on top. We've got our, potato, our fingerling potatoes that we've already done. Mm -hmm. okay, this that is a, accompanies this dish. Mm -hmm. Along with some asparagus. I'll go ahead and get that. Perfect meal. We've got some fingerling oh, potatoes that yeah. we've already roasted up. I'll turn this side down. Let him finish right over here. Perfect. Our sauce ready to go. We've got some asparagus over here in the oven. Oh, good. 
We also want to mention that at the Hancock Bank Club, mm -hmm. you serve a different buffet every night. Every night we do a different buffet. We try to theme it out. Um, we do anything from Italian night with, you know, homemade lasagna, mm -hmm. pastas, uh, southern nights where, you know, you come in and it might be uh, shrimp and grits, um, you name it, gumbo. We try to uh, definitely hit all the marks. And I mean, mm -hmm. I've lived and moved a lot of places uh, since I originally mm -hmm. left Pensacola uh, years ago before I came home. And traveling around and seeing so many different uh, styles of cuisine just in America, like, they're, you know, mm -hmm. to me, that's one of the beauty, the, to me, that's one of the best things about uh, America is that you can go to so many other places and get so many different types of food mm -hmm. without even having to leave the country. Um, so we're doing like Northwest cuisine or, you know, doing a Texas barbecue menu. Mm -hmm. So we, we try to keep it fresh for them. We're so glad you came back home and bringing all those different cuisines I am to too. the park. All right, you ready to plate this, this up? This is ready to go. All right, so. Yes, sir, I'm ready. Get this uh, grouper off of here. I like to plate right over the top of those potatoes. Oh, okay. Just like that. Take these asparagus. Just a few here and there. And this will be on your catering menu. Mm hmm And we also, like I said, we do our catering. We'll do plated as well as buffet. Okay. And we'll just take a, we've got oh. this nice orange, mar, uh, orange molasses reduction that we've reduced down. It's nice and syrupy. Mm -hmm. and we'll just hit him right over the top. Goes perfect with pecans, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it's nice and sweet. And that wonderful golf grouper. So we've got yes, the that is so nice. Pecan Let's put it right grouper. here, next the, to our battleship. All right. Oh, that is so nice. Tell everyone what our last dish is. The last dish we're going to do, we actually, uh, Chef Travis and I were in the uh, ARC Gateway. Crab cake cook off yes. last night, mm -hmm. and uh, we took second place in the People's Choice. So I'm going to do the I'm going to do the second place crab cake for you guys. Wonderful! A and it's actually prize a, winning crab cake. I love it. Yeah, we took home some hardware, so that was nice. Good, good we're deal. We're going to do that and okay. uh, talk about some more stuff down at the ballpark. All right, right after this, so stay with us. Up next is our award winning crab cake from the Blue Wahoos. That's right. Chris, tell us very briefly what you have in this. This is all jumbo lump, crab, crab meat, mm -hmm. a little bit of panko, uh, some sweet peppers, mini sweet peppers, chives, uh, citrus juice, citrus zest, and a little bit of egg wash mixed with some Creole mustard. Great. Got a nice hot pan. Mm -hmm. We don't like to bread the outside. We would like a we like a crab cake, not a panko cake. I like that too. I like mine where I can see the chunks of crab. In Absolutely. It. Not full of filler. And like I said, uh, as far as award winning, uh, last night, uh, Travis and I, my sous chef, mm -hmm. were at the Crab Cake Cook-Off. We took second place in the People's Choice. So we decided to make that for everybody today. And uh, right. I can't tell you how much of everything is in there because it is Travis's secret recipe. <laughs> okay. But uh, it is all really good stuff. Okay. We're also going to serve that with a little bit of uh, Bloody Mary aioli. Oh, And okay. some mimosa reduction. So it's kind of got a brunch theme. Wow, Top off a little bit of Wow, and that sounds so unusual. Yeah, the... The Bloody Mary aioli make with uh, mm -hmm. egg yolks, garlic, a little bit of uh, apple cider vinegar, some uh, citrus juice, and then we actually get some organic Bloody Mary mix that we buy from a lady down on Palafox during the farmer's market on the oh, weekend. Oh, yes, Palafox Market. Mm -hmm. Pour that in, the Bloody Mary mix in there with it, uh -huh. and add your oil and make your own little aioli. Sounds easy enough. And then for the mimosa reduction, it's just like it sounds. We just reduce down champagne and orange juice with a little bit of champagne vinegar. Wow. It's really good. I bet. Can't wait to try that. Uh, while this finishes cooking, I'm going to give everyone our telephone number. If you would like written copies of today's recipes, you can call Pensacola Energy at 436-5050, or you can visit our website at www.coastalcooking.com. Well, it looks like this crab cake's almost done, Carmela. It, it, it looks like it browned to perfection. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Beautiful. So, plate him, or her. Or her. She crab. She crab. There you go. Turn off the gas. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a little, I like to plate things not right in the center of the plate. Like, you know, I, mean, I work at a baseball stadium. But I have a lot of restaurant background. And to me, I just like odd numbers, things that are just a little bit out of sym symmetry. That's the and artist in you. They Did look you a little that? nice. That's what I've heard. Yes. So now we've got that crab cake plated on the plate. We're going to go ahead and put some aioli down. This is our Bloody Mary aioli. 
You serve this with both sauces? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll put a little decent amount. This is a, a decent sized crab cake. So I'll put this guy right here. Right here. Oh, there's the artist again. I can't help it. <laughs> some of this mimosa reduction, a little mimosa mm -hmm. gastrique, reduced down with uh, some shallots as well, in addition to the champagne vinegar of champagne. Mm -hmm. And orange juice, I'm just right over the top. Oh. Yeah. I can see why this was an award winner. And a nice little decent amount of uh, microgreens right on top. Perfect finishing touch, Chris. How beautiful. There yeah. are three dishes from the Blue Wahoos. Tell everyone quickly about your Facebook and your website. You can find us on Facebook at uh, the Pensacola Blue Wahoos page. Uh, mm -hmm. We have all of our stuff on there. We post food pictures, specials. Um, there's tons of pictures up there for the game, so you bring out the kids and you're at a game. Mm -hmm. Chances are you're going to find your picture on Facebook. Yes. And uh, also you can find uh, all kinds of uh, information about the games in Southern League at bluewahoos.com. Mm -hmm. We're on mm -hmm. Twitter. And if anyone's interested in special events at they, the park? They can call me down at the park, 850-934-8444, uh, mm -hmm. and just ask for myself, and uh, we'll take care of you. Absolutely. Well, Chris, you have taken care of me today. Oh, it was my pleasure. I don't know Thanks where I'm going to put all of this. Again. You certainly will. I don't know where I'm going to put all this, but I'm certainly going to try every single bit of I'm it. I'm going to help you. Yes, you are. <laughs> and I think our cameraman is, too. What do you He's think? been eyeing that sandwich for a he while now. He has. And um, folks, when you go to the Blue Wahoos game, get something besides the hot dogs and hamburgers. Because this, you have got such a wonderful Absolutely. array of food to try. Yeah, and, and we've made everything uh, reasonably priced. So mm -hmm. come have a po' boy. You know, don't think you have to go to a restaurant just to get a po' boy. That's come right. on down. And people rave about it. I, I have had people tell me that they're actually hooked on the shrimp and grits. So I take that as a huge compliment. Okay, that's the next thing I'm going to get. The okay. Next game. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Hey, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Great. We hope to see you again next week with more coastal cooking. This has been Coastal Cooking with your host Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking is brought to you by Pensacola Energy, clean, efficient, natural gas. Join us each Sunday at 6 p.m. for more Coastal Cooking.